E3 got canned this year. Probably every year going forward after this. The replacement mini conferences we've been getting have been really dragging out the disappointing reality that pretty much everything's delayed. These little mini shows feel like opening up a loot box or a card pack. You get this unrealistic idea in the back of your head that you'll open this god tier skin of the last legendary you need for a deck. More than likely, you know, you're just gonna get common, 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 common rare. The absolute minimum the game's able to give you. It's the exact same feeling tuning into any of these press conferences. You get your hopes up. Maybe Ubisoft will finally tease a new Splinter Cell game. It's gonna have some kind of Metal Gear crossover because he mentioned him in that one cutscene that one time. You're gonna play a snake, do snake stuff, like crawl around in a box and get old. Really though, you, you knew it was gonna be trash. 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 You're not rapping about that so raven. Sony's got a new state of play? Well, maybe we'll finally get to see something about the rumored Bloodborne PC port. Nope. Nothing. 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 Scary high school adults via. The short list of stuff I keep hoping to see includes Warhammer 3, or anything but the Wood Elf DLC, Elden Ring, and the still unnamed new Metal Slug game. SNK, the company that owns Metal Slug, recently emerged from Pachinko Hell after Konami barged in and it started getting kinda cramped. Lately, they've been doing what they can to re-establish relevance in the core gaming market. Their efforts started with a new King of Fighters, new Samurai Showdown, uh, getting Terry into Smash, and based off interviews, it sounds like Metal Slug is up next to be revived. Not just one, but two new Metal Slug games are planned for release in 2020. A mobile title and a console release. We still haven't heard much about the console game. It doesn't even have a working title yet. But the phone game's got a trailer. First impressions? It looks bad and stupid. It's a combo. That might seem kind of harsh. The company making it's only worth 10 cents after all. <laughs> But what you have to understand is Metal Slug 3 took my gorginity. It was the first game with blood my parents let me play. And it only ended up getting allowed because my dad was so blown away with how the game looked in the arcade. Metal Slug is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. It was made in a time where 3D graphics were taking over, and pixel art was beginning to be phased out as the norm. In order to compete with the new novel 3D graphics, Metal Slug pushed its 2D medium to the fullest it could possibly go. Everything's beautifully designed, rendered, and animated in this really unique art style. With loads of between frames using this black magic technique called sub-pixel animation, where they color value shift the pixels to make more subtle movements than pixels normally allow. Enemy soldiers have a variety of stances, from the regular standing, to climbing, to prone, each stance having contextual death animations. There's like four or five different walks they do. Sometimes they do a sneaky tiptoe, and the other times they'll sprint at you or run away from you in terror. Vehicles move with similarly fluid animations. They give them a lot of personality, too. The game's namesake, the Metal Slug, is a little tank that's more expressive than the entire cast of Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite combined. Its bouncy movements, and the way it recoils after it takes a hit make it seem very alive. Vehicles get destroyed in an equally impressive way. The explosion sprites in this series are kind of legendary. If you keep your eyes out while watching any video with hidden explosions, you may notice the Metal Slug sprites show up quite often online. Aside from just blowing up ready, Game further humanizes the mechanical enemy types by giving them crews of soldiers that'll end up bailing out or try for one last attack when the vehicle gets gone. My personal favorite example are these boats. When they take enough damage, the crew will start bailing out, and the ship breaks into a more damaged form. At which point, a rebel comes out and he tries to start pumping the water out. He's doing his best, okay? It's also a fun mechanic where when the ships become damaged like this, they usually spawn weapons or an ammo box on them. It gives you the option to board and retrieve it if you want to take the risk of sitting on there when it's about to blow up. The bigger war machines and monsters are made of a lot of little sprites, all animating separately but moving together which allows for this unique, hyper-detailed style. It looks like someone used black magic to bring hot rod art to life. I'm not sure if this technique even has a name. I've only ever seen it done to this extent in Metal Slug and some of Paul Robertson's work, who's the, uh, the Scott Pilgrim game artist guy. Outside of the character sprites, the game makes excellent use of the backgrounds and stage art. They're all detailed, full of color, and the primary way the game tries to convey what's happening in missions. There's not much of a story given to the player directly. The, the only real lines of dialogue are the famous power-up call-outs and the returning boss Alan O'Neill's little quips. See you in hell. Instead, the backgrounds will typically give context to the stage through some well-executed environmental storytelling. Some of my favorites include Mill Slug 3's first mission, where you pass a bunch of undead nade nuclear missiles, which explains why you're fighting giant mutant crabs and locusts. And also in Metal Slug 2, there's a mission where you board a train in the woods, and as you move up to the front of the train, it passes into a city, day eventually turns into night, 
and then the city eventually turns into on fire. I haven't really said much about how the game plays. That's not because they're bad. I'd say they're very solid. It's just hard to focus on anything but the presentation when it's a triple S. Well, the gameplay is more like a, a B. It's solid. It has a few fun gimmicks, too. You normally just run to the right of the screen, gunning down enemies, throwing bombs, dodging bullets to the best of your ability, while picking up special weapons like the famous heavy machine gun and rocket, rocket launcher. Getting hit kills you in one shot, uh, with a couple of special exceptions. This makes the game hard as balls. Occasionally, the game tosses you a vehicle like the titular metal slug, which has infinite ammo heavy machine guns that can aim diagonally. Oh yeah, you can't aim diagonally on foot, typically. Uh, to hit stuff like that, you gotta interchangeably aim up and forward to wobble your gun and hope that the bullets fired in the between frames hit where you're trying to hit. So it's, uh, it's a little, little awkward, a little, little stinky. Anyway, vehicles tend to swap your bombs out for some kind of special vehicle function, like the slug's main cannon. The game also has another fun gimmick where sometimes you transform into a special state. You collect a bunch of food at once, you get BIG! which changes all your character's animations, and modifies all the special weapons and attacks to operate a little different. In one of the rare cases where getting hit doesn't kill you outright, zombies instead transport you into a zombified state that changes your bombs into a blood vomit laser, lets you shoot down helicopters. Metal Slug would end up spawning six sequels, each one getting progressively more zany and spooky, the later games having you fight mummies, aliens, zombies, mating plants, giant bugs, cultists, and then aliens again. But now it's been 13 years since the last mainline game, which sucks even more when you consider each game is only about an hour long, so if you combined all of them, you got about as much content as like a Call of Duty campaign. So, since 2007, where's the series been? Well, like I said before, SNK did the Konami maneuver before Konami did it, dropped out of the console game for Pachinko and Mobile. The vomit produced during this time ranges from Java phone ports that cut out like 60% of the animations between frames, to Korean MMOs using 3D graphics that look absolutely nothing like the original game, to this war crime atrocity that reanimated all the sprites in this Elsa gate looking dookie. Then, finally, in 2014, they made this Clash of Clans knockoff reusing the old character sprites. It was apparently passable, and ended up spawning a 2016 sequel called Metal Slug Attack. Metal Slug Attack, or MSA, is a trashy pay-to-win gotcha game that's a game and name only. I do not recommend you play it, and I will be mad if you download it and enabled them. I do feel obligated to mention it, because it's got a metric ass ton of original characters with unique animations that are pretty close to the quality of the original games. This is also pretty much what the series has been mainly for the last four years. After eight years of nothing, new Metal Slug pixel art content has been being officially produced and released weekly for four years without me knowing. It is part of a gambling app that barely qualifies as a video game. Someone somewhere tried to use a monkey's paw to revive this series. There's, there's no other explanation for this hell reality. Uh, well, anyway, it's been a busy few years in the Metal Slugs. New developments include Crocs existing in universe. Mummies were turned into their own mini faction. They got new units in the form of mummy cat girls. There are vampires now. The bad guys from 4 develop sentient super virus that manifests themselves as a lolly and daddy issues. The gas mask guys have a name for the silent P and leaned way heavier into the culty magic stuff than they did before. I have absolutely no idea what's going on with the aliens. Um, the Frankenstein Samus is pretty cool looking though. Uh, other than that, every faction got a ton of OCs. A lot of which are anime girls, but that just kind of is the nature of the gacha games. People will gamble for cartoon boobies. If you glance through the concept art of the earlier Metal Slug games, it also becomes apparent that there was always a desire to draw anime butts. Gotcha is just an excuse to do it. Anyway. A lot of the new designs are very solid, and they have some excellent animations. Many of the characters come riding in with some new vehicle, or have some kind of massive attack. It was designed just for this gambling trash. I really hope if Metal Slug comes back as a real video game, a few of these characters can get saved from this abomination repurposed as bosses or uh, assists like Udon, the monkey in the diaper. Once MSA stops getting updates, I'm not gonna miss it. Seeing all these designs just get deleted from existence is gonna sting a bit. Whatever, enough about phone games. SNK people have been saying in interviews a new Metal Slug shooter for home systems is in the works, and I'm very worried. Metal Slug 11 was the last numbered release, and despite being a DS game, they really didn't make any attempts at all to adapt from arcade to console sensibilities. It was still pretty much just another arcade port like the previous releases. 
it's kind of a problem, since games designed for arcade tend to make lackluster console releases. They're typically too short, only about an hour in length, and they use this awkward credit system that makes you choose between limited credits, which means running out halfway through makes you restart the entire game, or setting it to free play, which removes all the stakes and deflates the tension of the game. The games were also balanced with shaking people down for more quarters in mind, it would often throw nearly impossible situations at the players. The arcade games also had an annoying tendency to get stingy with pickups during boss fights, so you're stuck with a pistol until you need to put more money in to continue, at which point you get a complimentary machine gun. I guess the game was always kind of pay to win if you frame it right. I really think for Metal Slug 2020 to succeed, they need to address these arcade hand-me-downs and finally properly adapt the series to a home system format. Aw oh, man. If only a Contra-style arcade shooter whose main identity was its difficulty and masterful use of a vintage animation style came out recently that addressed all the arcade problems. If only a game came out like three years ago that did all that and sold five million copies, energizing interest in an otherwise dead genre. If only that game then teased additional content, further exciting that audience, only for them to then go radio silent for months, leaving an anxious fan base and creating a perfect market gap for Metal Slug. SNK has been pitched the softest ball they could have possibly been pitched, but I am not going to be surprised at all when they not only fail to hit it, but somehow eat the bat. I have no faith in any video game companies anymore. I'm not suggesting they totally rip off Cuphead. I don't think it'd be great if they made Metal Slug a boss rush game. However, I think there's plenty of concepts that they should probably bring over. For absolutely sure, the arcade continue system needs to go. It can be replaced with something like Cuphead's three hits, then you have to restart a level. Making the player have to do a few retries is also a good way to pat the game time out, which is desperately needed, seeing how Cuphead, a single game, is longer than the entire numbered Metal Slug series combined. Next, it'd be nice if they could break the levels up with the sort of hub world or mission select screen, mostly just to give the player a second to breathe between missions. It'd also be excellent if they would provide you with multiple choices for your next mission at times. That way, if you get stuck on one, you can take a break and go try another for a little bit. Bonus points if they somehow tie unlocking these to the Metal Slug 3 style branching paths. Imagine if taking a submarine path unlocked an underwater mission next. Well, taking the land path had you just continue on land. I don't expect this to happen at all, by the way. But I wish it did. Uh, with those issues out of the way, I think a new Metal Slug game would be really solid. And if marketed to the Cuphead crowd, it'd probably sell way better than any of the previous games. If I want to go full, cringe, game designed fan fiction wish fulfillment mode, I'd like it if they tried to introduce some kind of meter system like Cuphead had. I think meters are just really fun to play with. And it was pretty well implemented into Cuphead. It repurposed all the score pickups into being items that give you meter, since I don't think anyone cares about score now. When I see my name next to a big score, I don't get the same feeling as seeing an S rank. I just see. They can tie a ton of fun stuff to meters, like EX attacks for whatever weapon you're holding, or letting the player cheat out a weapon of their choice, or even a vehicle. It would also be a good excuse to include some of the MSA characters, and save them from their gotcha game hell. You'd use them like summons. Oh, whatever. Metal Slug deserves better than how it's been being treated. I'm hoping for something close to what I described, but I'm fully bracing for Metal Slug 7 too. This time everything is done in Unreal Engine so they can get some extra money from the Epic exclusivity. Then they'll get a tie-in deal with Fortnite so I have to watch Fio floss while I cry myself to sleep. 